Hi everybody, welcome to our Progression Pathways event. Thank you for attending today. Um, this is a third event as a part of our series and today we're focusing on student life. Um, next slide, please. So um, we have Charlotte as our tech support who I just spoke to to ask to change slides. Um, so she's working in the background and we also have Lucy who's gonna join us for the Q&A session later. Um, I, my name is Shamsa, I'm an uh, out, Outreach Hub Assistant for Study Hire, and Study Hire are the ones who are hosting the event today. We're also joined by lots of lovely student ambassadors from partner universities, associate partner universities and also associate colleges, um, Oxford Brookes University, Reading University, Buckinghamshire New University, um, who have gone through some rebranding at the moment, Royal Agricultural University, Abingdon and Whitney College and Milton Keynes College as well. So we're also discussing the topic for today is going to be more about what it's like to be a student at university and college, kind of maybe general accommodation things, well-being things, but also um, services that are usually available and job opportunities that come up. So it's just basically understanding how your life would be um, away from just the academics and the studying part. Um, but before we get started on our event today, we just wanted to get an idea of which one of these institutions you guys are aware of and um, heard of maybe. So you don't necessarily have to know much about them, but it's just nice for us to know. So first we're gonna ask, which of these universities have you heard of before? So you should see something pop up on your screen and all you have to do is just vote on it and submit. And once we do that, then I'm going to ask after what colleges um, you've heard of before. I'll just give you a bit of time to have a think and vote. Thank you for that. And then now we're going to find out which of the two colleges that are with us today you've heard of before. So another one should pop up on your screen. Thank you for that. So that's um, information that's um, good for us to know in terms of um, how much more you need to know about certain institutions and what our um, student ambassadors are talking about. So um, another thing that we want to identify to you is that we've actually attached handouts. So when you log on to your, um, when you're on the system, you can see like a little handout section. There'll be two handouts and one of them are an overview of each of the institutions that are here with us today, plus website links that you can follow up with later. So say if you think, Oh, I'd like to know more about that uni because the student ambassador said some really fun things about it, then you can follow up and do a bit more research. And to help with that research, there's actually another handout where you can um, put um, sort of research about e each institution. One of the things that we found with students is that sometimes they're looking at unis and then they don't really have a sort of place to compare um, and contrast different aspects of the uni and how um, they want to think about joining it. So you can use that handout, either download it as a Word document, type on there, or you can print it, whatever's easiest, and then just write some notes on there about each of the institutions and what maybe some pros and cons and things like that. Um, you also have a questions box that you can add questions on throughout the event, um, which we're gonna answer in the live Q&A session. So you can do them throughout. It's not like you would ask the question, we won't answer it straight away, we'll answer it at the end. Um, and then another thing is just to also in the questions box, if you have any other queries or if you have any statements, if you can't hear somebody, please do let us know. Um, but other than that, I'm going to pass on to our first student ambassador, um, Rejoice, uh, from Oxford Brookes University. So next slide, please, Charlotte. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you very Rejoice. much. Hi everyone, so my name is Rejoice and I'm a first year master's student studying occupational therapy at Oxford Brooks. That's me there looking all happy and smiley. Uh, next slide please. Yeah, so life on campus. Um, as you all know, due to COVID-19, it's not been the conventional student experience. Um, whilst I was applying for university, things were getting very 
um, difficult, you know, with the numbers rising higher and higher. Uh, it being my second degree, I chose to stay at home uh, instead of uh, moving over to Oxford Brooks. But um, even though I um, chose to stay at home for, for the duration of my first year, um, I've still been able to enjoy some of the campus activities and still been able to visit Oxford um, as needed. So part of that was online freshers. So due to um, obviously social distancing measures, there um, hasn't really been that much, you know, in-person uh, freshers activities. But one thing about Brooks, which was really, really good, was the fact that um, they did online events. So um, what I did was I went on the Brooks uh, Instagram page and they were advertising all the various societies that you could get involved in. They had uh, life of a student. So you could kind of uh, see what was taking place. What would life be if it was um, if I was over at Oxford Brooks? Um, another thing that I did as well, I knew some societies which I wanted to get involved in, which appealed to me, which were advertised on the Instagram page, and then um, I would take part in those. So, for example, the um, ASC uh, Society had movie nights, so we would all um, go online and use platforms such as Zoom and many other um, sites and would watch movies together. Um, another thing as well is once you um, Role, enroll as a student there was Facebook pages for your course and other things that you were interested in whether it's like a sports group or whether it's um, just a general society which I'll kind of go into more later and they would advertise you know their events that were going on so that way I was still able to interact with other students and still have that student experience even though um, I've been living at home so that's some of the ways that technology has been really good because it's been working to my advantage in that sense I've still been able to meet various students and connect and also um, going from that as well um, they were they were able to do some socially distanced stores so I know during freshers week as well you had different um, companies like Domino's come along um, other societies kind of advertised their their societies but it was you know in store so you kind of had to move along and that way it was really good because I could kind of see what's taking place on campus also meet different students so even though it's been online it's really been wonderful because I've still been able to, to have that student experience and still get involved with various um, activities next slide please so kind of going more into societies and sports there literally is an A to Z of all the various things you can get involved in. Whether you like food, whether it's a culture that you embrace, whether it's a language you want to learn, whether it's a certain genre of movies you enjoy, there's literally everything there for you. And there I took a screenshot of some of the things that are involved uh, that are there. So you have history, you have Hong Kong society, you have Indian Brook society, there's investment if you're into your money investing, there's also that as well. There's music, there's baking, there's um, anime, you literally name it, there's whatever you want to get yourself involved in. Um, for me, I chose to take part in Occupational Therapy Society because that's what I study and I thought it would be really good to enhance my educational experience and also get to know my cohort a lot more because um, we've essentially been a lot of Zoom studying. So this is, was a, like an amazing way for me to get to know who's on my course um, to enhance um, that you know, classroom experience that I normally would have um, outside um, of, of just the conventional Zoom sessions that we've been having. So that's some of the things I've been involved in. Um, I said I've also been involved in the Afro African Caribbean Society as well. Um, when restaurants were open, they did have some events. So I would kind of know in advance when things were happening. And if I was able to move uh, to travel down to uh, Oxford I would do so and there were meeting up at restaurants and they would have food so you'd kind of get to know people around so there's all sorts of different things you can get involved in um, netball as well was something that I was interested in but due to the distance I couldn't really commit to it and obviously it's a contact sport so there were really, it wasn't really going on but if you're interested in sports as well there is everything available to you um, there's literally an array of things so you never be lost for what to take part in it's literally there and the great thing as well is 
you make it what you uh, what you want to make it so you can also create your own society if there's nothing that's available to you that you might find interesting and uh, more so as well you can also apply for various positions normally within societies you need um, a president you need welfare officers to ensure that students are getting on well within the societies you need a treasurer to ensure that money is being managed well to fund all the activities that are taking place so there's plenty for you to get involved in next slide and then more so to enhance my student experience i've been doing ambassador jobs which is what i'm doing now talking to you about my student experience at brooks so one thing that i loved about brooks is the fact that you know as being a student you're short on money sometimes and being a student ambassador is very very flexible this um various jobs that you can partake in based on your experience or if you don't have much experience you can kind of build that up due to the training that's provided um for me it's something that i had done before previously at my previous university and i know that you know as a student you want to talk to someone who understands um what it's like to be a student it really opens up your eyes to the options that are available to you uh, you want to hear that first-hand account of you know what's happening um how somebody's journey inspired them to get into university and it's such a pivotal um part of you know your, your life you know being a student and it's important that um you know i share the, the positive experiences that i've had and you know trans you know transfer those things uh, to whoever i can help so that's one of the reasons why i wanted to do um student ambassador jobs i've also part, uh, partake in in volunteer work as well so if you want to do some volunteer jobs there's plenty that you can take part in as well even here at brooks um or just general around i know some people uh, work in charities and various roles so there's plenty of you to get involved in at oxford brooks Next slide. So my top tip being a student is to keep balanced. I don't know about you, but if you've been studying online, there's Zoom fatigue and you get so draining, sometimes just sitting there and just listening. Uh, to people talk sometimes attention span can be really really short or uh, you're trying to catch up and you know do so many things and it's really essential that you keep a balanced routine so join a society um, do some exercise do things with friends you can go for walks um, Oxford is a beautiful city um, whereby you can you know take scenic walks go and you know on a boat shooting around the canals there's so many things that you can do so that's what be my top tip in terms of you know in making sure that you really get the most out of your student experience is do the hard work but also ensure that you have fun whilst you're doing it and if you want to hear more about uh, other students experience based on maybe what course they study or um, maybe just another person's account of how they're finding things you can download the app called unibuddy and um, if you just take um, a picture there um, of that, you'll be able then to access and join in. I'll ask you just to um, to create a, a profile, and you can talk to students here at Oxford Brooks, such as myself or any other students, and find out how they've been finding things. If you've got any um, questions about bursaries, funding, um, or just any general questions about you know what grades that are needed for you to join, um, for you to apply for a course, sorry, you're able to find all of that out or just general, just chit chat if you just need to find out more about university. So please utilize that to your advantage. You'll be talking firsthand to students. And I hope that, you know, some of you will think about joining Oxford Brooks at some time. It's been uh, an amazing experience so far, although being online, I still feel very much involved um, with everything that's going on. So thank you so much and I'll be available for questions later. Thanks so much Rejoice, that was really useful and it's really exciting to hear that um, you can actually be like, social even though you're at home. So even though I think a lot of people think that because you stay at home you're like oh well I'm not going to get the full experience of uni. So it's really nice to hear that you can actually get that while being at home and also being safe like social distancing as well. So really really useful stuff um next speaker is lillian from reading university who'll be talking to us about her student life experience so thank you lillian i think you might be I muted lillian sorry there we go um hi everyone uh, so yeah i'm in my third year of studying psychology at the university of reading which means that this is my final year i just finished my exams last week so 
we're now just packing up and looking to go home. Um, next slide, please. So my first week at university was a long time ago, um, but it was pre-COVID, which hopefully how it's going to be in September for a lot of you, um, whether you come to Reading or another university. Um, throughout the first week, there was a lot of welcome talks going on. We had safety talks, fire talks, um, where to go, how to use the library. Um, along with the talks, we also had a lot of campus tours and accommodation tours. Um, which were really useful if you were studying in a building that was kind of in the middle of nowhere or at least one that wasn't on the centre of campus. Another big thing which I absolutely loved going to was the sports societies and career fairs. Um, so these were held at the beginning of the year and they meant that you could go round, sign up to different societies, go to taster sessions. So me and my friend went to like a cocktail taster session, which was really fun. And then the different sports and everything, I think we did like rugby and tennis, which was quite interesting to like try out. And then at the end of like our two weeks of like settling down, starting lectures, everything like that, we had a big freshers ball. Um, this basically meant that they brought in like a mini theme park sort of rides. We had some live DJs and some live acts and it was just basically a big party outside where everyone got dressed up, every there was like food outlets and it was just a really nice sort of environment. So it was really easy to meet people because there was so many things going on in the first week that you would just get talking. And regarding like our course and stuff, um, they did a get to know everyone sort of barbecue right at the start of the year. So we got to do like games, get to know people, sort of sit down and chat, meet our lectures, meet our tutor tutors. And it was just really good to like have that because it just made you feel welcome and at home and meant that you had people that you could talk to if you needed help with anything. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so regarding like accommodation from my experience um, in my first year, I lived in like shared bathroom self catered accommodation. Uh, what that meant was that I shared my kitchen with 10 people. I cooked for myself so as the fridge, hob, cooker, everything you sort of expect. And I also shared a bathroom with like 10 other girls, which sounds quite scary, but it was fine. It was never busy. I went to the gym a lot and showered there. So it was absolutely like no issue. Uh, the bills are included, which was amazing because it was one less thing to worry about. There was 24 seven like security and maintenance. So if you were ever locked out of your bedroom, if your sink stopped working, if the toilet was blocked, anything like that, you could just call someone and they would come fix it as soon as they could. Um, regarding that you get assigned like a bedroom and a kitchen so you don't actually get to pick and choose but in a way that's quite nice because you meet new people and I'm currently living with the people that I met in my first year all that time ago. Um, in my second and third year I'm currently living in private housing next door to my university. I went home due to Covid last year but came back this year to do my exams and basically say goodbye and have like a final party of everyone. Um, the only thing that's different is that your rent and bills are separate in second and third year for me. So we managed our bills separately, which sort of makes you more aware and makes you more like budgeting and everything like that becomes a bit more of a priority in like second and third year. But it's not an issue because you get to choose who you live with. So for me, it was a positive experience because I was living with people who I liked and who studied similar courses to me so we could help each other out. And it was just a really nice positive experience. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so opportunities at university. So as previously said, we do have campus jobs. So student ambassador work, which is what I do. Um, so open, e open events, visit days, anything like that is something that I take part in. I'm also a mentor for year 12 students who want to study psychology. So we plan events, we chat online. I help them with like personal statements and fits and bobs like that which is really helpful and studying psychology, I want to go into youth work. So it's something to put on my CV, which is always good. Um, Society, so throughout my three years, I've been part of sign language and call full. Um, it's a new skill that I've learned for both of them. They're both really like interesting. I've met loads of new friends, gone out like to different restaurants and bars and everything that I've never heard of before. And it's just been like a really nice positive experience. It's more people to support you throughout your time at university, but also just someone to do something with when there's not anyone else about. And then career support. So at Reading, we have really good career support. Each school has their own department. 
um, regarding careers and also things like support. So you can book one to one sessions, whether that's to go over your CV, to go over any personal like covering letters for jobs or just to go over interview advice and anything like that. Um, this is something that I took advantage of throughout my three years at university, including first year um, when it came to like applying for smaller roles like summer jobs and also volunteer positions. Uh, it was just really beneficial and I would definitely say to take advantage of that if your university does offer it. Yeah, so thank you very much for listening. Um, these are a few links to some of our, like, so our UniBuddy platform, which is previously mentioned, is a way to talk to current students at the University of Reading for all the different courses. We also have some virtual tours and virtual accommodation tours if you're interested in looking into things like that. It's, they're really helpful. You can see all the different room types, get a good idea of what you want size-wise, what to bring as well, so how much space you have in your bedroom. And I would just say my top tip is to just have a look around at different universities and take everything that they have to offer, whether it's visit days, talks on like the topic that you're interested in, or just like any career advice that your school can offer you, just because it will give you that little step ahead of other people and hopefully you'll find it quite beneficial. Thank you so much, Lillian. That was really useful. And to know more about sort of living at uni has been handy as well. Just getting an idea of what it's like to live with other people. And um, yeah, hopefully that's helpful for those thinking about living out as well. Um, next person is Juliet from Buckinghamshire New University, who's studying criminal criminological psychology. <laughs> that's difficult. <laughs> Thanks, Juliet. Thank you. Yeah, you end up needing a degree to say it. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I've just finished um, my degree. I finished yesterday um, and I've really enjoyed my past three years studying at uh, Buckinghamshire University. So next slide, please. So I'm actually going to start with the Student Union um, and talk maybe a little bit about my freshers as well. So we're known as one of the top three student unions in the country. Um, when I did my freshers, we had uh, what was known as like a give it a go week. Um, so about three weeks in, we had all the different societies kind of book out the afternoons once you finish your lectures. Um, so you could try out rugby for both men and women. Um, you could go to the baking society, go horse riding, go skiing, um, try out fencing. Um, we have over 40 different societies and they're all fantastic. And if there's not one that if there's not one there that you want to set up you just need to find 10 people and the student union will be like here's your funding go ahead have fun um and we're able to do it for free due to what's known as our big deal so this is where like you spend one pound on and you spend any money on anything and for every pound that's spent 20p goes back into it it means that all the societies can have their funding and you can go try out all these amazing different things um, that you might never get to do naturally anyway um, for free and even if you never go to them again you've tried it um, there's also activities we do for free cv boosters days out so i in my first year i did a first aid course um, so that's normally about 100 pounds so we put a deposit down um, and you go to the course you get your certificate your foot sorry you're fully qualified and then you get your five pound back so we do lots of different things like these we do public speaking we do um days out to london go to different comic cons i did that at the end of my first year um spent most of my student loan that day but at least the comic con ticket was free so pros and cons to it um there's fundraising activities to add to your cv as well as well as um quiz nights movie marathons there was one time they were like, right, for two days, we're going to have the Harry Potter movies on and you just come in whenever you want, um, but we're going to watch all of them. There's some popcorn, there's some drinks, have some fun. Um, and it's a great way to meet new people. Uh, so next slide, please. So I mentioned um, the days out. So um, our three campuses are in High Wycombe, which is our main one, Uxbridge and Aylesbury. Um, what's really good is we're so close to London. Um, obviously, the other two, Oxbridge and Ellsbury, are in the outer zones, um, and it takes about half an hour to 45 minutes on the train from High Wycombe to London. 
um, and you can actually get to all over the country because of the trains and the buses, so it's really good. Um, the events are organised by the Students' Union, which makes it a lot cheaper. Um, even for some of our mature students, uh, they do days out to like the zoo for the whole family um, or to the aquarium. Um, there's also stuff designed specifically for courses. So um, the Students' Union work with my course so that we could go to prisons um, and go uh, actually experience what it'd be like to be a prison officer. Um, we've been to the Freud Museum in London, which was fantastic. Um, and they arrange some really good days out. And if there's something you want to do that they're not doing, you just have to ask them and they'll see if they can set it up. So it's these great opportunities to kind of see um, different things and like travel and just go out with your friends sometimes as well. So that's really good. Uh, next slide, if possible. And finally, I want to talk about the employment. Um, Bucks is fantastic with employment. We have a 98% employability rate within six months. And that's actually one of the reasons I did go to Bucks um, because like, I wanted that assurance that obviously I was going to get a job. Um, and so obviously while you're working for the, uh, while you're going to uni, you can work for the Students' Union, you can work for the university as a student ambassador, digital ambassador, a mentor for year nines to year 12s. Um, you can work uh, with Study Higher and with Brightside. There's loads of things you can do, and it's fantastic because it's something to put on your CV. It's that extra pocket money um, for, to go treat yourself. Um, and also, due to being in the towns where all our universities are, there's so many jobs. Like here in High Wycombe, we have the Eden Centre, and the Student Union are really great at finding where those jobs are, putting them on their job board and they give your CV out to these people and really help you try and actually get these jobs. Um, we have a careers and employability service that will look through your CV, help you write one that will be acceptable. Um, they'll help you find jobs in the field you wanna go into. They work with the courses as well. So um, in psychology, we have a Minds at Work week. So for one week, we have no lessons. We just learn how to, um, kind of go into volunteer work, what we'll need in the fields. Um, and then we have one big careers day where loads of different fields come in and just kind of um, talk to us. So if COVID hadn't happened, I would have been working with the Ministry of Defence during the summer of 2020, um, doing security research. Um, unfortunately, COVID hit, so I wasn't able to, um, but that was something that they offer. There's prison services, counselling, uh, and so many different options. Um, and our lecturers have such wonderful links into the industries. Um, so a lot of my lecturers have uh, links to the Thames Valley Police, Metropolitan, um, different prison systems, um, and other courses have such wonderful links into the industry as well. So definitely something to look into. Uh, next slide, if possible. So we use um, the TAP platform, and this is fantastic for actually talking to students. There's from first years, people doing second year, third year masters, um, and lecturers as well. So you can talk to a range of people about different aspects of our university, whether it's you're interested in the course, um, you're worried about something, if you're actually interested in the student life as well. These guys, uh, all the student ambassadors and digital ambassadors on this platform are fantastic and they know what they're talking about and they'll answer the best they can and as honestly as they can because they've lived through university life and they're there to answer it. Um, we also are currently doing campus tours, um, actually in person. So be good booking onto one of those. If you're interested, that can also be done through our website. Yeah, thank you for listening. Thanks so much, Julia. Um, and exciting that you've finished your course now. And I think it's really cool that they do all these trips um, and then at the same time allow you to try new things. So I think that's one of the things about going to uni. You're like, oh, should I try that or should I stay within my comfort zone? So definitely exciting to see that they offer that at uni. And thank you for mentioning that they support you after uni as well. If you look at when you're researching your uni, just see how long do you have the careers service for afterwards? Because that could be something that you use. I've used career services before at unis and they're so useful. So definitely something to think about. Our next speaker is um, Emily from Royal Agricultural University. So thank you, Emily.
I'm mute. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much to the lovely ladies who've gone before me. Um, I have big shoes to fill. There was so much content there. But um, I am M. I am studying International Business Management at the RU in Siren Sister, um, which I don't think many people have heard of, judging by last, last session's poll. But hopefully you'll learn a little bit more about us um, after this slide. If I could have the next one, please. So um, I'll just uh, give you a, an intro into Siren, um, very much similar to, to what I've heard so far. We also have a freshers week where we have a freshers ball, a barbecue on the first day. Um, everyone gets to know each other. Accommodation, I think is not on the next slide, so I'll talk about it now. Um, accommodation, you can apply for certain accommodation blocks and where where they can, the uni will give you what you apply for. So there's rooms ranging from en suite to um, double double rooms, which you share with someone else, or single rooms and shared showers. So there's a huge combo and catered and self-catered. Um, I have always had my own bathroom um, until I moved off campus. And then I lived in student housing, which is also really exciting. Um, I think it was Lillian who mentioned that you have to pay your own bills off campus and you start to realise why um, your parents are always nagging you about heating and windows and all that kind of stuff because it makes a huge difference. Um, but yeah, uh, we have um, that opportunity um, or you can come back onto campus because I came back onto campus for my third year um, just so I could be closer to the library like the nerd I am. Um, yeah, so th yeah, that's sort of how freshers work. And um, we we also have um, a kind of try it out day with sports and societies, which is fantastic. Um, and yeah, when you're on campus, uh, we also have uh, the 24 seven maintenance and security. We have a Porter's Lodge, which is absolutely fantastic. And they will help you with everything from drawing pins for your notice board to <laughs> changing batteries for your fairy lights. Um, they are fantastic, yeah. So um, Siren is in the Cotswolds, a really beautiful part of the world. We have a national express route that comes through us, so easy to get to London, I think it's just under two hours. Um, we also have Kimball's train station, um, lots of outdoorsy stuff to do in the area. Don't come to Siren if you're looking for a techno club because we don't have one. Um, but we have uh, Bath, not too far away, London, as I said, Oxford, just up the road from us. Um, Part-time job opportunities, we have an on-campus bar, which is great fun. I worked in, in there in second year. Um, yeah, and that was, that was really a lot of fun. Um, I also work as a student ambassador, which is great, super, super flexible. Um, and also I'm so happy to do it because I've really loved my time here at uni. Um, so happy to uh, spread the word. Um, there's also um, course representative work. I also work as a student uh, support officer, which is the best job in the world because you get paid to have fun with students um, and try and make their time at uni a little bit more exciting. Um, or, you know, if someone's feeling homesick or a little bit stressed and overwhelmed, you get a, a budget just dedicated to tea and cake, which is fantastic. Um, so yeah, uh, lots to do, but there's also lots of little pubs and restaurants. Um, there's lots of, uh, well, there's a big uh, uh, polo, polo company across the road. So people who are interested in horses often go and work there as well. Um, so yeah, lo loads of stuff to do around here. If I could have the next slide, please. Um, so wellbeing, Siren is, or the RAU I should say, is fantastic. It's a very, very small uni. It's one of the reasons I chose the uni. I'm a disabled student, so I needed something with a little bit more support. Um, and they really, really have been fantastic. Um, as I said, there's the student advisory roles, which I'm a part of now, um, but there's also a team just of, of staff dedicated to helping students. I suppose the whole uni is at the end of the day. There's lots of international student support, which I come from Zimbabwe. So it's really, really lovely um, when you're feeling homesick, um, which often happens um, to know that there's people out there waiting with some biltong for, 
when the day comes. Um, we have unlimited counselling at our university, so you can go as many times as you want throughout the semester, it's all free of charge. Um, we also have an open door policy with all our lecturers and professors, um, which is fantastic just from a more academic point of view if you're struggling with coursework um, or yeah, anything really to do with academics, you can just waltz into a lecturer's office providing they're there and they will gladly help you out, which is really rare, um, but I appreciate it a lot. We also have a hardship fund um, for students who have come into unforeseen financial difficulties, which um, the uni has been pouring out of because of COVID. I think a lot of students lost their jobs, um, a lot of parents um, found themselves in sticky situations. So yeah, that's been fantastic. We also have our on-campus clinic, um, where you can access the, the doctors um, and nurses, which is also great. And of course our SU, which kind of oversees all the fun, fun stuff, um, but also helps liaise between uh, the students and the academic staff if there are any um, concerns regarding the university in general. So yeah, we're really, really well looked after here. Um, yeah. So sports and societies, one thing that I think links uh, into um, well-being is the sense of community we get here at Siren. Because it's quite a small uni, everyone gets to know everyone, um, which might seem a little bit small town and old school, but I think it's it's lovely to um, be able to make so many friends um, because obviously we bump into each other all the time, so we get to know each other better. Um, we do have uh, definitely a smaller selection of sports and societies compared to bigger unis, um, uh, but they are very exciting ones. We have the ski society, we have shooting, um, clay pigeon shooting down at Foss, which is just around the corner from us. We have beagling, we have um, sort of like the, the more mainstream ones like choir, and we have an enterprise society which is really cool we uh we produce our own wine in a vineyard nearby so everything to do with the wine production process you can become a part um uh, yeah become a part of um but we also have the opportunities to start your own society um so a couple of years ago we had beekeeping society which is actually still going um, so yeah, sometimes you do start these things and they let on. Um, one year we had a huge influx of Germans for some reason. So we had German society and that was really good fun because they organized Oktoberfest and sausage evenings and it was great. Um, and we love balls so much. Uh, we have our Mabel, our Christmas ball, Frisch's ball, um, Caledonian ball. We really, really enjoy um, a good boogie. Um, and also, uh, we like to watch people doing other sports. So watching rugby on a Wednesday afternoon is a huge uh, community event almost. We get really, I um, uh, want to say patriotic, but that's not the word. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, and then, um, yeah, we also love to watch our girls playing um, lacrosse. Uh, and then the little Teletubby costume is our rag rally where every year we, the whole university drives in kind of like a contingent to a different location, goes wild for a night and drives back to raise money for charity, um, which is also really, really good fun. Um, and I think next slide, please. So thank you very much for listening. Um, just a couple links there if you want to get in touch. We also have a, a profile on Unibuddy, which um, I think the girls mentioned before me is a great, great way to kind of speak to students. Um, in real time as as far as we can manage um but yeah please do um ask us any questions the uni is really really good at replying um it might seem like a silly question but it's so worth it oh i forgot to mention our careers department sorry about that we also have a great careers department um similar to what everyone else has said um really great cv clinics um alumni relations are really strong at the uni lots of people get jobs through that um, a lot of our professors and lecturers were in industry before they came here, so advice through that. And I know it might not seem very important now because all you're thinking about are BKs and the like, but uh, you really want to make sure that you can get a job after uni, especially if a global pandemic strikes. So 
really great thing to look for in a uni is um, kind of like your job um, prospect afterwards. So yeah, sounds really good at that. Um, and that's all for today, folks. So thank you. Thank you so much. I, uh, thank you so much, Emma. I think it's really important that you mentioned about the area around the uni as well, because when you're sort of looking at where you want to go, don't just look at the course and and what they're teaching and the content. Like look at the area around it, the social, the you know the struggle. You know, you mentioned yours is a smaller uni, so something that keep in mind when you guys are just sort of researching unis as well so thank you um next talk is lois we've got from abandon and whitney college thank you hello um i'm really sorry if you lose me but we have the biggest thunderstorm that's just started here so if you lose, if my wi-fi drops out i'm so sorry um but hey my name is lois i um well before studying abandon and whitney i actually finished last year um during the start of COVID, which was interesting. So I did a Chartered Management Degree Apprenticeship. Um, next slide, please. Um, so I'm going to talk about the first week because um, mine was very different. Um, I did go to uni previously ahead of doing my degree apprenticeship. So I did do freshers and I can confirm it's really fun. But um, I then left and I actually went down a different path. So my first week at Abingdon and Whitney was slightly different. Um, we had a three day week induction um, and it was, yeah, very different to freshers. So lots of icebreakers, lots of campus tours. Um, the Abingdon and Whitney campus is actually quite small because they're split up into two, well, three different campuses. Um, so they do different studies. Um, you can, I know you can attend the Oxford Brooks uh, freshers if you wish to because I know that my course is actually run through Oxford Brooks so you can do that if you want to still do that um, but I was slightly older when I joined the course so um, so yeah lots of campus tours lots of course introductions and lots of sort of group challenges um, encouraging us to work together we were quite a small group so we didn't have sort of a big cohort um we were all just in one classroom so actually it was quite important for us to get to know each other and and work in groups so that first three day week was yeah very very different to your normal first week um next slide please um so again general living is very different um like i say i did go away to uni and live away from home one time and I left and I came home. This was so much better for me. I'm actually really local. So I'm in a Whitley College is very much a two minute drive down the road for me. Um, so I was still living with my parents, but I know there was a lot of people that actually moved down and they were renting. Um, so we all had separate jobs. So actually the course was run one day a week. So you only go in on a Friday. Um, and that's the only time you have sort of with lectures. I know that you have their expectations to do more outside. So you have the opportunity to do your work at work as well. Um, so there was a lot, it's really easy accessible, um, both Abingdon and Whitney and the Common Lees campus, I believe. Um, a lot of us actually drive, so there's loads of parking for students, um, especially Abingdon and Whitney. Um, and I know a lot of people commuted in um, as well. Um, in terms of socialising, we actually used to organise our own events, so we'd all sort of mingle in our own little groups that we sort of made friends with in, during the first week, and then we'd go and organise our own events and go out together, um, which was quite nice. So yeah, a bit different to normal uni life, but still very interesting. I think you get a lot more free time and a lot more time to yourself to decide sort of what you want to do and how you want to spend it. Um, so next slide, please. Um, so opportunities, I know I've, I've put a few things down on here. Abingdon and Whitney College does have its own club, sort of different clubs and uh, things that you can get involved with, especially student reps. I know they like to have those from every class. They do organise trips and visits, but depends on which course you're on. Um, there are sports and activities and like I say clubs, but I know you can also get involved in a lot of the Brooks things. Um, so in terms of societies i know you can involve yourself if you need to because whilst you're still a student at Abingdon and whitney you're also classed as a student at oxford brooks 
Um, so yeah, like I say, social life as well, that was definitely organized by ourselves. Um, and just in terms of careers, I know everyone else has mentioned it. Um, obviously I was on an apprenticeship, so I actually got to choose my job and my role before I even started my degree. So my degree actually revolved around my job and I definitely say that the apprenticeship is definitely something to look into. Um, I'm not sort of worrying now about where I'm going to go or what job I'm going to get because I'm already in it. So I finished my degree and I got accreditation to the Chartered Management Institute and I still have a job. And they also paid for my university and my friendship. So I definitely say that I can definitely vouch for apprenticeships degrees, especially at the moment, if you want something to be more secure, I definitely look into it um, going forward. Uh, next slide, please. So yeah, thank you. I know mine, mine doesn't sound as fun as all the others uh, with Rashes Weeks and everything, but it's definitely something to look into if, you, if you're more happy to just sort of do part-time studying and just carry on. I know I'm really career driven, um, so I'm just, I was just itching to actually get into a job. So I actually studying and working at the same time was really, really great for me. And especially if you've tried out university and you don't particularly enjoy it like I did, um, there's always other routes to look at. So I definitely recommend looking into apprenticeships and particularly Aaron and Whitney College. But thank you, everyone. Thank you, Lois. That's really helpful and just so grateful to have someone from a college come in and also talk about different types of institutions because you, you need to um, think about nowadays, there's lots more options available and um, there's different routes. So when you're doing your research, don't necessarily sort of um, stick to one HE route. There's plenty available. So, yeah, and you can find out more on the handout as well about Abingdon and Whitney if you want to find out more about that. And uh, next person is also from a college, is Christian, uh, Milton Keynes College. Thank you, Christian. Uh, hello, my name is Christian. Uh, I'm a student at Milton Keynes College, uh, more specifically the, the Institute of Technology. I'm studying uh, Digital Technologies HNC, which is sort of like an alternative part to uh, university, if you would like that. And uh, on to the next slide, please. And then starting off, my first week at the college was really good. We started off with a few induction days that gave uh, gave us a tour of the campus site. They showed, they told us that there's food trucks and um, all of that with how the courses are and what the core units and what optional units you can choose as well, if that's something you would like to do. And um, college life is actually, um, you'll be attending college uh, for three days a week. This can be a mixture of uh, online or physical. It's totally up to you whether you want to be physically in the class or you, if you have something, you can join in through uh, online through the team software. And the other cool thing about this is that, let's say you miss a lesson, nothing to worry about. It's already recorded and um, in a specific channel that you can usually check out afterwards. And actually um, afterwards, uh, within the induction actually, we were heavily uh, doing group projects, sort of. Uh, we were getting getting to know each other and trying to commute with each other. Essentially, one of the uh, group projects was actually pretty fun and interesting. I'll talk about that right now. Which is, we were told how to build a specific website. Uh, it's called the data database website, and the challenge was to attack this website using something called uh, in SQL injection. And the whole and the whole point was we would go around and meet other students and try and attack their website while they try to protect their website. But this is all related to our course of which was digital technologies. Um, going on to the next slide, please. Um, here I'll talk about the bursary scheme that's available to you as part of MK College. Uh, it's a separate sort of scheme. Um, you know how you'd usually have your student finances is separate to that. You can have it as an addition if you are struggling uh, financially. And there's also a well-being and resilience team who can help you with your mental health and with any disabilities you have if you're struggling to cope with college. This team is actually full of experts and I asked, personally ask for their help as well because um, I usually get overload of stress and uh, anxiety attacks or all of that. <laughs> Uh, 
Do we also have a career team at MK College, which can uh, help you with uh, your pathway, really, what what you want to do when you uh, after you finish your course and all of that with trying to help you with your CV as well. They can look at your CV, uh, advice on what's best for you to do right now and what you can do. And finally, you have your own progress mentors. Um, these are usually once per month and they're essentially a one-to-one -one appointment. You would go meet the student and uh, usually a teacher as well or a lecturer on, of your course. They will try and uh, discuss what's best for you and what how you are doing currently and how you can improve on mostly. Uh, going off to the next slide. Uh, something to note is that we use Microsoft Teams heavily and it's our main telecommunication software. And in there is dedicated channels for apprenticeships, for other job opportunities, and mostly employee talks as well. And depending on your course, you will actually be working with some industry leading um, organizations. For for example, um, for my course, I was working with uh, Microsoft and McAfee, and also with uh, a forensic solutions for cybersecurity. Uh, on to the next slide, please. And uh, thank you very much for listening. Um, I'll finish off by saying that these are some of the links that you can go to and check out the college ad and other schemes for especially the best, which has more requirements you need to uh, actually get it. And uh, thank you. Thanks, Christian. That was really useful to hear more about college and um, what kind of things you can do. And the thing about attacking each other's website seems fun as well, even though I have no idea how to do any of that. So um, thank you for that. Thank you for all student ambassadors for their talks. We're actually going to really quickly launch a quick poll just asking how you um, found the presentations today. It's just really help us with sort of feedback and how we can kind of think about um, whether you found this useful. Um, so I'll just give you a bit of time to answer that poll. Should be on your screen now. Couple more seconds. Thank you. Great. Um, so now we are going to actually move on to the Q&A portion of our um, talk. So I'll just hand over to my colleague Lucy, who will go through the Q&A questions. Thank you, Shannon. Hi, everybody. Um, we are a little bit over time. Um, obviously, the students have got lots to talk about their student experiences. So um, I'm just going to sort of allocate questions to you individually rather than get you all to answer all of the questions. Um, so one question that we had come through. So uh, let's ask Rejoice. Um, do you have any mental health service uh, services in the union? So I guess that's around the well-being. Yes, um, sorry, I didn't mention that earlier. We definitely do have mental wellbeing services which are offered to you. Um, also during COVID, they have been doing regular checkups. So um, I received phone calls just to check on how I was just doing in general if I wanted extra support that was available to me. Um, on top of uh, mental health support, we also have, if you have learning difficulties or just additional learning needs, if you're just struggling with your course as well, you can also be given a mentor and a tutor. So there's all of those services that are definitely available to you at Brooks. Perfect, thank you. Um, and for the uni-based students, um, so let's ask Juliet, um, do you have diversity on campus? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, we have a lot of international students come in and it's fantastic. I lived with um, a couple of uh, Polish boys in the first year um, in a mixed flat. Um, so we got to learn um, Polish, we taught them English, we got to um, take part, one of my flatmates was also Romanian, so we took part in loads of different traditions then. Um, and our university is very diverse in general. We have specific societies and we it's also known as Erasmus, and there's nights where any Erasmus students can just get together, um, have pizza nights, get to know each other, see people of their nationality and others that have come from Old oh, Poland and um, parts of Asia, parts of Europe. Um, honestly, like it's so diverse here. And it's so wonderful because 
you get to experience so many different cultures and traditions and it really opens your eyes as well so yeah definitely diverse and um emily i know you mentioned german society so i'm assuming you have quite a lot of diversity as well yeah for for a small uh, uni you'd be surprised um we're quite a specialist uni um so we don't offer a lot of degrees but the ones we do we, we're quite well known for um so you get people coming from all over the world um to study agriculture obviously because we're the Royal Agriculture University but also a lot of uh, land-based um degrees so yeah we we do get a lot of diversity great um and for Lillian and Christian then and there's also a question about how was your experience on campus in first year what advice and would you give to avoid doing on campus in your first year um i guess maybe getting lost or something like that um so christian obviously you said that you could work virtually and on campus have you done a bit of blend of both uh yeah you can do it's totally up to you if you want to actually physically be at the class at campus side it's up to you or you can join online um they will still ask you to tell a reason as to why you didn't come but it's totally relaxed um it's not compulsory that you have to be there. It's up to you, as, as I said earlier. That's good. And Lillian, what's your uh, sort of experience on campus in your first year as well? Um, yeah, I got lost loads on campus because Reading is like 380 hectares or something like that of parkland. Um, but it's beautiful and I found loads of like green space to walk around and everything. So it was quite positive, like experience um saying that there's maps everywhere and there's usually people everywhere as well so you can just ask and be like where's this building and like most of the time they'll know where it is if not google maps will become your best friend because all our buildings show up on there as well great well that's brilliant um i don't think oxford brooks had that when i was there so that's quite handy um okay well that's all the questions now so i hand back to shamza as we're um wrapping up now but thank you all for answering those questions Thanks, Lucy. And um, just to say, because we ran out of time with the Q&A today, um, you'll see on our follow up email that my email will be on there and you can just email me questions and I can if you have a specific question for a student ambassador, I can always ask them and I can get back to you. So don't worry that we um, ran a bit over today. Um, I just had a quick last. Sorry about all these questions, poll questions. Just one last question about how you found the, um, the webinar today. Um, it would be really useful if you could just Give us some feedback on that. Uh, I'll just give you a few seconds to answer that, please. Um, and when we're finished today as well, you'll also find um, a survey attached to the follow-up email. You'll get the follow-up email within a day. So if you could fill out that survey, which will pop up after this webinar, or you can do it tomorrow, you know, whenever you want, um, it'll be great for us to see. Um, the feedback that you think about in the session and there's bits to write your your opinions and stuff like that as well but then also we just want to thank you for attending this webinar series because now that the series is over um we wanted to hopefully give um those of you who maybe attended all three of them just an experience of what he would be like from student ambassadors themselves to get some first-hand experience and knowledge because the thing is we can say all we want um you know how uni is and stuff but you know these students are there right now and especially during covid so um please do let us know um what you thought of today another oh thank you another thing is um you can follow us on our twitter instagram and we have a linkedin it's just be study higher so you can find us on any of those things and check out our handouts for follow-ups for any of the um uni information i just noticed some of the um Presentations also had links as well, but for the chat services, if you literally just type in the uni and type in the chat service, it will come up like UniBuddy or the access platform, it will come up. So, or if you want the link specifically, then just email me. Um, but other than that, thank you so much for attending. Um, we have a, uh, our website, since the series is over, our website has a um, event. So Study Higher website has an event section and we always sort of post like new things that are happening in there, plus resources. There's always sort of new updates on there, but really we do post all that on Twitter as well. So if you need any sort of updates in that matter, do follow that. Another thing we will be doing, but probably we'll just 
be coming shortly, not straight away, is probably just put our, um, all these recordings onto the Study Higher website. So once they're up there, you can kind of rewatch them and um, you know, if you miss something or you wanted to, you forgot a student ambassador's name or something, then you can um, have a look on there. So thank you very much for joining us today. And we hope you have a nice evening. And um, I was just looking outside to see if it was sunny. It's not it's still raining here. And thank you again. Um, so bye, everyone. Bye.